It's no surprise children die of disease in Africa. But here's a new 21st century twist. Drug companies have stopped making the medicine that would cure Angelica. Welcome to the logic of the global market. North of the equator, near the source of the White Nile, we crossed into rebel-controlled southern Sudan. We'd heard an old and terrible disease had returned. A hundred years ago, it wiped out half the country's population. By the 60s, it had been almost eradicated. Now sleeping sickness is back. It's just the kind of ancient disease that the modern global village we're all supposed to live in nowadays ought to be able to wipe out without any problem at all. But it's not happening. Sleeping sickness is killing 300,000 people every year. So what's going wrong? I was on my way to meet a doctor I hoped would have some answers. Tembura Sleeping Sickness Hospital was overflowing with hundreds of sick people and their relatives. I found Dr. Mickey Richer catching up after a trip abroad. Angelica's family had walked for weeks to get here, hoping to give their daughter a chance of life. So this is a nine-year-old girl from uh, Central Africa Republic. And she'd been sick uh, with abnormal behavior for about a month. Angelica has sleeping sickness. Thousands of parasites are attacking her brain. Then she came here and just a month ago, one month ago. Angelica's family knows if nothing's done, she'll slip into insanity, a coma, and death. Okay, there you go, little girl. There's no modern miracle cure on hand to end Angelica's suffering. The global economy is driven by money, and developing drugs for diseases that hit poor people doesn't pay. Okay. Uh, she's having obviously uncontrollable uh, movements and shakiness, and when you uh, stimulate her, mouthing movements, as you can see, uh, and inappropriate behavior, uh, very classic of untreated sleeping sickness. Okay. But how serious is this? Well, we're going to start her on her medicine, and hopefully she will do all right. But uh, the sicker you are, uh, the more likely you are to react to that medication also. So. All around us was the evidence of the damage this disease does to the human brain. Untreated, it's always fatal but it can take years to die of sleeping sickness. The disease is rising here three times faster than HIV, but unlike HIV, it doesn't affect people in rich countries. So there are no high-tech drugs, no massive laboratories. How serious a disease is it in this area? Well, sleeping sickness is a serious disease because it's 100% fatal if untreated. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, the, the prevalence of the disease has really steadily, steadily risen upward. And in some villages, it's actually as high as 45%. Say the man of the family got it. Well, that affects the whole family because then the man can't work, but his wife has to take care of him. And that means she can't take care of her family, the children, huh? Uh, so that. When one family member has it, it just destroys the whole community. People around here use the rivers for bathing and drinking water. But the tsetse fly breeds near water, 
and a single bite from this fly can be enough to pass on the parasite that causes the disease. People with sleeping sickness have no consumer power. Drug labs in the West are splicing genes and cloning embryos, but here they get a drug developed in 1929 whose active ingredient is arsenic. The idea is to give enough poison to kill the parasite without killing the patient. This is malarsoprol, which you can see in a glass vial. It comes in a glass vial. Each injection is a gamble with death. Malarsoprol kills around one in 20 patients. We don't uh, draw it up before the patient comes to sit in that chair because what it does is it's such a caustic substance that it's dissolved in, it melts the plastic of the syringe. They told me it was like having acid in your veins. That's how, how much it hurts and burns and stings. Yeah. Makes an adult man cry, huh? It really did yeah. look painful. Yeah, it is. But malarsoprol will cause destruction, burning, stinging in the tissue, and then death of those cells. And don't forget, it's the, the preparation that it's preserving, too. The, the glycerin glycoid is really a caustic agent. What so. is it? It's like an acid. It's antifreeze. It's similar to antifreeze. So what you, uh, put, what you put in your cough, right? That what you antifreeze. Put in, that antifreeze, yeah. Patients go through this every day for ten days. Sylvia's already had nine injections. The last one will be the hardest. Right. You can't use one vein usually more than one or two times because the malarsoprol burns the vein. Do you, think he, do you think you could get some in there? We can try. I think we'll try it. For all this agony, the drug doesn't even work on a third of patients. It's a lot more painful doing uh, the injections here in the leg because you're right on the bone and there's not a lot of uh, tissue to, to cushion, huh? <laughs> this, when you give it right on the bone like this, it's very painful. It's really painful. Very painful, exquisitely. John, the needle's bent. John, it's bent. Careful. Arsenic injections may kill one in 20 patients, but compared to modern treatments, they're cheap. About 30 pounds for each course. What's happened? Um, it got clotted. Yeah. Sylvia, we'll let you rest just for a minute, huh? And then we'll try Justin, and then we'll come back one more time. Maybe we'll try a bigger vein. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I thought that, I found that one. That really yesterday. must be like torture for her. It is. I mean, the Every day she gets... Uh, Sylvia won't ever be a priority for drugs companies. They only sell 1% of their drugs in Africa, 80% of their markets in the West. The next morning, Angelica is still waiting for her malarsoprol. She's so weak, Mickey fears the drug will kill her. Then Mickey tells me something horrific. A better drug has been discovered, but it's no longer being made. It's called DFMO. She can't show me any current stock. It's all run out. But she thinks there's a little bit of expired DFMO in an abandoned storeroom. A lizard. You know, lizards and snake tails, they seem the same, but it's a lizard. So it's the medicines here are far too old to use. It's chilling to think doctors have better drugs a decade ago than they do today. Instead of sleeping sickness treatment advancing, it's gone back in time. I'm looking for DFMO. We do have it here. I know we do. So we'll just find it. Ah, here it is. We have found it. Um, let's see. I guess my pants are as good as anything. 
Well, Try to get it off so you can read the label, huh? Mm -hmm. It is. It's um, a vial of DFMO. DFMO is expensive to make, ten times more than melosoprol. It was originally developed for prostate cancer. It's pure chance it cures sleeping sickness. If it had cured cancer, it would still be produced. But it didn't, so Africa has to do without. Since it's not uh, cost effective for the drug companies, uh, it's no longer going to be made. That's quite an extraordinary situation. Yeah, and I think probably not a situation that exists anywhere else in the world, huh? If we had a, a, an illness in the United States that a, a drug would cure, but uh, uh, you know it wasn't cost effective, I think they'd still produce it. But here, uh, we have a drug that we know works, and yet it's not being made because the, the people that need it can't buy it. It's no good just blaming drug companies. The one that made DFMO, Aventis, gave away the license free to the World Health Organization. But the WHO couldn't find anyone to make it for a price it could afford. The world's supply of DFMO will run out this year. Southern Sudan can't count on outside help anymore. In the past, colonial masters or superpowers found it in their interest to supply medical aid. Now Southern Sudan slipped into civil war. The government's lost control. Healthcare's left to the free market. Every day, Mickey sends a screening unit to outlying villages. If they can spot the disease in its early stage before it reaches the brain, they can use a modern drug called pentamonine to kill the parasite. The villagers know that if the test shows the disease has reached their brain, they face a possible death sentence. What they don't know is which will kill them, the disease or the drug that's meant to cure them. The doctors look for evidence of the parasite in the blood. If they find just one parasite, it means sleeping sickness. One girl is unlucky. Six-year-old Genty has got the disease. Tomorrow she'll have more tests to see how advanced her illness is. It's Genty's day of reckoning. Melosoprol's so dangerous, Mickey doesn't want to use it unless the parasite's reached her brain. If it hasn't, she can be treated with pentamonine. Are you good? Please. Come on. Say hello. We're going to have a procedure here. I'm looking yeah. suspicious. Mm. Yeah. You look a bit suspicious. Yeah. Yes. What are you, you going to do here? Well, the disease has two stages. Early on, if somebody has just been bitten by the tsetse fly, the parasite is in what we call the periphery of their body, uh, just in the blood uh, and in the, the lymph system. Once the disease progresses, later on, it's called stage two disease, and that's when the parasite invades the brain. Uh, so now we're trying to differentiate if she has early disease, stage one, or late disease, stage two. If Mickey had one drug to treat both stages of sleeping sickness, none of this would be necessary.
Okay. Well, we only got a few drops. Is that enough? Yeah. Yeah, this is enough. We usually try to take one cc or so. And this is less, but we're only going to do a few tests. Jensi, come on. So what we'll do with this now, we've got the cerebral spinal fluid. Duncan, who's our laboratory technician here, will test it for the three parameters we look for in the cerebral spinal fluid. If Genty has fewer than five white cells in the sample, the parasite hasn't yet reached her brain. Four cells. Because she's been caught early by screening, Genty can be treated by the safer drug. She's been spared melarsoprol. <laughs> Only one in a hundred drugs developed is for tropical diseases, and many of those are byproducts of cures for more lucrative illnesses. When it comes to sleeping sickness, there's none of the research that goes into afflictions of the rich. I was wondering what the parasite actually does inside your brain. Well, actually, it's a good question. Uh, no one knows exactly what it does in the brain. Taking care of lives and the living is the priority here. And yes, research needs to be done, but uh, it's not something that anybody has done research on. There's been some. I'm not saying there's none totally, but... Uh, uh, but this is an age-old illness, and we still don't know the exact mechanism of what's gone in the brain because there's not been that research. Africa's millions of sleeping sickness victims need a stroke of luck to break the vicious circle of market forces. Amazingly, that could happen. It's this crazy. By sheer chance, DFMO's been found to slow facial hair growth. Millions of women in the West want it. So the razor giant Gillette is about to turn the best cure for sleeping sickness into a cosmetic face cream for women with moustaches. The global village is beginning to look like a jungle where only the rich survive. Yeah, we saw yesterday Angelica and she's having her first melarsoprol and they're worried about her because she's been having such convulsions. Mickey's assistant fears Angelica may not survive the treatment. And Letitia Wright. She has such small veins and she's in such poor condition in regards to being mal malnourished that we're afraid that her veins are going to collapse. So uh, we basically have one chance probably uh, to give her the in injection. We've looked on both arms, her feet, yes. and we found one, real small one, yes. right yes. there, mm -hmm. okay? So what we need the mother is just to re reassure her, talk her through it, be very no, relaxed. No, 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 no. Of course, if the drug company still made DFMO for sleeping sickness, Angelica wouldn't be facing an injection of arsenic. It's gonna burn, so we want her to be as least as comfortable as possible. Okay, and tell the mother, explain to the mother... The only way scenes like this will end is if Gillette's hair removal cream catches on in the West. That could push down the cost of producing DFMO, and a drug company might make it again for sleeping sickness. In the meantime, it's business as usual. Okay, one, two, three, go. Oh, we tell the patients that it's normal to have sort of a burning sensation going up the arm. Um, it's such a toxic drug that we're trying to get in the vein as, as quickly as... Well, we want to keep the Malarzoprol over three to five minutes just because it is so, so toxic. It's so thick that it actually can eat the syringe. It can eat the syringe. Right, so you have plastic possibly going into the vein as, as well. What's it going to do to such a tiny vein? Well, we're going to have to ro rotate the veins. What we do is we usually try the, the right arm first. OK, Letitia, real slow, OK? Um, we'll try the left arm today, and then we'll try the right arm tomorrow. If we can't find any in the hands, 
then we'll go to the feet. But often with patients like this, we don't really have an option. And Angelica, do you think she's going to be okay? What do you think? I don't know, actually. Mm -hmm. She's extremely weak. Um, you've seen yesterday that she has definite uh, neurological problems. She has a facial tic. I don't know. Two weeks later, after nine more injections, Angelica was discharged. They hope the treatment's been successful. But unless DFMO becomes available, they fear if she relapses, she'll die. Okay. Of course, drugs companies aren't charities, but we seem to be living in some sort of moral vacuum, which means if you're a doctor in the third world, you'd better hope that some drug developed for animals or even a cosmetic will turn out to cure a disease that kills millions of people. On average, it costs $300 million to develop a new drug. If you were a drug company, why would you spend millions of dollars of research into finding a cure for something, for something that nobody's going to pay you for? Huh? You have to give the drug out. Africans cannot pay for it. I guess if you had to blame anyone, it would be the political uh, you know, convictions of the world in general. Economics drives pretty much everything in the world. It's the driving force. Um, people's lives aren't so important. It was my last day here, and I joined Mickey on a five-hour drive to the settlement of Iba. Sleeping sickness is ravaging this community. Our first visit was to a man who'd been threatening his family a classic sign of the creeping insanity that comes with sleeping sickness. He's already had two courses of arsenic injections. They haven't worked because the parasite's getting resistant. Ah, is this him? His options are running out. Michael. Michael? Mm. Michael. Mickey tells me a Michael. colleague sent her a drug used Michael. on a similar disease in South America. She's got no idea Michael. if it'll work here, but a desperate situation calls for desperate measures. Michael, ask him if he has a headache, a bad headache. Michael, don't do Yes, yes, headache. Does he think the sleeping sickness has come back? Yes. Before I take him back, the family must know he's had the relapse medicine. Now, the only medicine I have is a drug that's not used very much in sleeping sickness. It's the only other medicine I can give him. I cannot promise that he will not die, huh? So you must explain that. It's not for sure that I can cure him. Do they still want me to take him? Hmm? He says nothing is very bad. You understand? Okay. Good. Okay. 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 Good. In a profit-driven world, the absurd becomes logical. There are effective modern drugs to cure sleeping sickness in animals, but not humans. It's more profitable to cure a cow than a person. So Michael is almost certainly going to die. He's just an ideal candidate for DFMO. If I had uh, DFMO, uh, I wouldn't even talk of uh, an experimental, untried drug. I'd just put him on DFMO. Uh, if we could get it, I'd use that first choice, no doubt, in my mind, because I know that works. I mean, but I don't have it. Of course, the global economy has brought benefits, and not just to the rich world but market forces don't make exceptions for good causes. What governs the sale of computers, clothes or food 
governs medicines too. Those who can't pay don't get. Nita, Nita, Nita. 